So basically, um, um, this is usually when we meet in those events, there is like a, a poke talk or something like Mohammed has done. And then we meet in the, in the hallway and we talk, you know, about, then we make plans about all the pro plans, the projects we have, what is open, what are next tasks and so on. And everyone say, I will do this, I will do that. And then uh, no, nobody does shit for one year. And then we <laughs> we meet again next year, and you know. So then I thought this year, okay, let's instead of doing hallway, let's have you know like a little like something more organized. Maybe it will help. I don't think so. I think that nobody's gonna do shit, and next year we will be exactly in the same situation. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When I see it integrated, I will believe it. Okay. So. Um, Okay, I, I guess there is no need to introduce the tool. Okay. All right, so those are all the topics that I would like to discuss. And uh, not to talk about them, but to discuss. Okay. And to say, okay, I will do this or I will do that. All right, so the first one is the big one, which is now we have POC 4.2. The compiler works well enough, I would say. And actually, for a for one release, for one major release, we have not had like any catastrophic uh, bug report like, oh, you know, the, the compiler is generating crap or it's segmentation fault. Or it, It's quite, it works. We know that it has problems, fundamental problems, like for example, the we know that the unions, the mapping of, of integral unions is not quite right at the moment. We know why. But we, okay, I mean, but we have to go and see how to fix it. But um, what else is, doesn't work, actually, it doesn't work. Uh, like, we know things that we know that the compiler is not generating the right thing. Like, oh, for example, the labels in constructed structs, it doesn't work neither. Um, so, okay, so, um, Okay, so what I'm, I'm doing right now is basically a new comp not a new compiler, but I think this was always planned. This was always on the on the plan, which is that. Um, so right now, um, in the situation that we have now, we have the parser. We have the parser generates an abstract syntax tree, then. Um, we have a series of passes, optimization passes and transformation and analysis um, that work on in the abstract syntax tree. And then it generates a, a transformers and syntax tree. And then we have a, a gen for code, gener a code generator that using this, the POC macro assembler, it generates PVM code. And then you have the PVM code that gets executed. Right? And this can be seen like... Um, Oh Jesus! Okay, like uh, like var x equals three um, compiler ast x plus two. Okay, sorry, Peter. Yes. So yeah. Um, well, but you can see. So this is the ast for this expression, right? Printed in some way, and then. Uh, VM disassembly expression, and this is the PVM code that gets generated by the code generator. So again, the PVM is a is a stack machine, and okay, so it works. So this is the current situation. So since the beginning, the plan was okay. We want to have something working as soon as possible because it's useful. So that's why we with this is my static we. So I mean it's me the one to bl blamed here. <laughs> so then I thought, you know what? I will go trivial. So I get I make the compiler, I make these optimization passes, but it's all AST based with a very complicated code generator. The POC code generator is not trivial. Mohammed knows. Yeah. So uh, we will transition from that to this. So in the new compiler that I'm working at now, um, the parser is still, it's the same parser. 
uh, it also generates the same AST. We will keep most of the analysis and transformation phases in the AST because they are nice. It's easy to transform the tree. Um, then instead of a co-generator pass gen, we will have a low pass that then we lower to a, inter a stack-based intermediate rep representation language, IR, which I call SEER because I lack imagination. So then in the SEER, we will do local optimizations, then global optimizations, then register allocation, and then gen, now we'll get this stack-based IR, this middle-end IR, and then basically generate the PBM. Now, how to do this without breaking everything? Yeah. It can have red registers. We don't use them now, but it can have registers. It's, all you need is a line saying, okay, I want three registers. Jitter provides that. Yeah. Actually, I think we have one register <laughs> that we don't use. But yeah, yeah, it can, it can have register. Okay, and then of course, uh, this is the, the screen is like so. Let's say bye bye to big font. Is this still readable? Okay, uh, I am sorry. If, okay, so how to do this without breaking poke? This is, you know, like the, the main question here. So what I suggest to do, and I am already sort of doing, is this. So we have the parser. It's the same parser. We have the, the three transformation analysis phases that includes type analysis and so on. It is exactly the same one. Now, you can still use the old, the current code generator that generates PBM. And then this is the macro assembler. This is the, the RAS, you know, and all that, okay. And then it generates the PVM. Now, we will be adding um, another path that you can configure when you run poke, which is use the new compiler, so the new middle end. So then, instead of going from uh, the, 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 then this will become the front end, actually. So then you will call the low pass, and then it will do like the local optimization, global optimizations, and it will be called to this Gen2, which is the alternative code generator that will generate PBM. So I think it's possible that if we do this it this way, we can actually have the middle end and no middle end option available. And then when we are happy with the new middle end, we will because, and then we just remove Gen and we achieve this, the right. The right. Any objection, any comment? About the plan, I think this may work. Yeah? Uh, does Poke have global memory? The what? Uh, does PBM have global memory? Yeah. Uh, it uh, well, you mean heap? You mean a heap? No, but you don't need a heap in Poke. Okay. Hmm. Because it's maybe you can steal some of the SMTGC work to verify the latter path. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Bruno. <laughs> well, we say because we know he's watching if this is being stripped. I think that maybe you can steal the uh, SMTGCC type of validator for verifying the SEER passes? Um, possibly, be, could be. Let's make sure, okay, we didn't make semantics while it's experimental. Could be, could be, but uh, you will see now in the next minute that SEER is, is based on U-code. And that's okay. You will see. Let's revisit this in in five minutes. Okay. So, um, okay. So basically, those notes here is what you just said, right? And uh, so here, the note is: since we are adding a register allocator, we will add some registers to the PVM, but this will simply not be used when generate when using the the, the old compiler, the old code generator, and that's. Fine, because we don't have any ABI or anything involved in registers. The, the, our calling conventions in the virtual machine are all based on stack. So, no big deal. At least for now. The code will be compiled anyway each time, so it doesn't matter. Uh, right, right. So, this will be. Okay, so. But please do it fast, because I'm trying to do fast too, because we have. Yeah.
No, this is just for for basically not having a Reno's house for. I mean, yeah, this is just, yeah. It seems like it could be uh, maybe the neck to keep both and then having the bun instead of like creating a branch with just the oh, okay. stuff in places. Uh, yeah, it will be a pain in the ass, but less than it will be if we just you know have a, the whole thing in a branch because in this case we can know when one of those breaks because we can run the test suite at some point you know with both. But yeah, it, that's a good point. But trust me, it will be worse if we just have a complete POC branch that will not. And note, observe that this is like it, it's not that it can work a little. It can't work a little bit. It's either working or not working, right? So that's uh, that's that's why. Okay, so just to give you an imp uh, a, a quick overview on how this new middle end is going to work. So basically, this C program. Um, so it's basically. A linear list of statements. Levels are a kind of statements. So it compiles the POC program into a linear list of statements here, up, down, and then the statements can refer to expressions. So um, this is basically how a POC program. By program, I mean a function or a procedure, right? A function, okay, or or a main or the file. So this is gonna. So you have the statement list. So you have basically statements chained. Uh, single single linked list. This is pretty trivial. And then, um, when the statement makes references to an expression, then the the each expression and sub expressions they are encoded in a hash table and conforming a directed acyclic graph. Okay, do you visualize it? So basically, each entry in the hash table is one is one operator, is one node in the DAG, and it has the operator, add, minus, whatever, a left operand and a right operand. We will only have binary operands in here, and then each this entry has to it, the reference has to pointer so to say to the left and the right operands, which are themselves expressions, themselves entries here, and then if you follow, so this is a way of basically encoding a, a DAG in a table. And it's actually a hash table, and I was thinking about using Merkle, Merkle DAX, which a Merkle tree is a tree where um, um, each node is hashed. Well, a Merkle tree is a tree in which each node is identified univocally by some key. Now, the key is derived from the key of the children plus the hidden payload, the opaque payload of that node. This means that you have to build children up. And in this Merkle thing, it's a SHA, it's a SHA hash or something. So uh, this has the advantage that since those ideas are unique, uh, you can hash perfectly, you can perfect hash with them. So that's, you know. Uh, OK, they are immutable. I have some notes here. But this is, so why there are two? The one is one is is a DAG for each expression. Well, sorry, for each function, you have this this local hash, which is um, every expression that is in a basic block of the program can only appear once in this table, so they are not replicated. So if you have, for example, var a, and then in one expression, in one line of the program, you have a plus two, and in other place, you have a plus two. The way this data structure gets built, you only have one entry in this local hash for a plus two. That's why it's a DAG, and that's why it's the DAG you have like two, more than two, you can have two parents in this case, or, or you know, or more. Local key means local to basic block. Local to basic block, yeah. And then there is also uh, oh well, and for each entry, it paints to the it points to the basic block to the start of the basic block in the, in the statements list, and also to its image in the global hash. What is the global hash? The global hash is the same, right? So it's a DAC encoded there, but the, the entries are unique in the, in the function, not in the, in, the, in the basic block. This is used for both global optimizations and local optimizations. OK. Um, I don't want to go into So and then the control flow graph is linear link of basic blocks with set of pointers predecessors, set of pointers successors. This is super simple. Now, um, 
yeah, so this is, I wanted just to give you, you know, like an overview of what's going on in the new middle end. Now, the process is the following. I think I have to comment it here. Seems yeah. Huh? It's a bit unconventional to not use something like a free address code. Yeah, but I am following Fred Cho. I, I, yeah, I know, but I prefer this. This, this is basically the tec this technique was developed by Fred Cho back in '82, and uh, basically this uh, and this has been used in MIPS compilers, you know, like since for a long time, since ever, and it works quite well. It works quite well, yeah. And the PVM is stack based, so for example, here uh, Cho has algorithms to using this internal representation or similar to, for example, optimize. Uh, um, variables into stack positions, right. you know, stuff like that, or the stack reorganization. Or the, anyway, so Low will traverse the AST, create the series statements. Um, and then, basically, uh, while you are traversing the AST, you are generating the statements in this list, you are creating the, the expressions, and as soon as you get to co you complete a basic block, you can run a set of local optimizations. You build the control flow graph for the basic block. You build the, well, anyway, so this is the process. Now, why I choose this approach? Because this leads to a very simple compiler. It is simple, it's still powerful, but it's simple to understand, and I think it's more than enough for our needs. Okay, so this is as far as, as, far as the, of the new compiler, middle end. So I am working on this. I don't know how much time it will take to me, but at this point, it will have to be me, me alone because it will not be productive to, you know, the hole in the ground is too small for more than one person, you know, for now. But, okay. Can we move on or? Yeah, I will try to not break anything, but I'm going to use the master branch. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. Reactive IOs. I need someone, we need someone to work on this, and honestly, I think it is fun, and this can be done in like a few days, and it will, it will involve a huge improvement for the POC users, huge improvements. Okay, so right now, um, we have the IU space, and we have, the IU space is what you are editing, right? And basically, the way that it works is that when you map a value in POG, uh, this value, um, okay, it, it gets created that every time that you refer to that value, it gets remapped. So, for example, if here we say uh, we have an IU space, and then we say, okay, um, and then we say, okay, bar f equals foo at, so this value is mapped. Every time you refer to f, the values of the contents of the extract are read back from the IU space. And this is very slow, very, very slow. Now, you can switch this off using auto-remap now. Now, this is not going to happen. What's the problem? The problem with disabling auto-remap is that if something changes in the IU space, then um, you will not be seeing current values. So it can auto remap. I usually set it to no when I, 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 I execute like poker scripts that are very slow and I know exactly that this is not going to be an issue. For example, anything that is read only. Okay. So since, as, again, since the beginning, we thought about using a reactive model instead, but we prefer to do the remaps first getting something working and now the, what is this? Okay. Um, okay, so suppose that you map a value like this extract foo at some offset in the in some IO space. So when you map the value, you tell the IO space via PVM instructions, obviously, right? In the, in this case it will be a new instruction called IO recval, which is the only instruction we need to add, technically speaking, strictly speaking. So then when you map, when, when the, the code generator generates codes for the foo at whatever place, and it, create, it, it, it calls a mapper to get a mapped value, then it tells, it can generate this instruction to and tells the IU space, this object, this value, 
which is the box value or the, this value is mapped from this in this range. So it calls this IOS register range function that will be defined in IOS.h. This value is mapped now in begin uh, with this size or either an explicit end. Okay, then when this happens, a new row gets added in this conceptual table that cannot be implemented like this because it will be super slow. Although it has been tempted to do it, you know, and then when someone completes, include that structure. So then a new then a new entry gets added here. Like for example, if we did this, this var f equals what zero, then here and this is like uh, uh, right? If you map another value, then Mm. and so on. This is when you are mapping values. Now, remember that POC is a dynamic language and that it's, we, 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 we are garbage collected, if you are optimistic, okay? And we use the, the, this, uh, this Bohem garbage collector, which, okay. Uh, so, um, when the garbage collector decides that to some value is no longer referred, so it's death, it allows to, the, the when garbage collector allows to define destructors for particular kind of values. So we can add a destructor that then calls these IOS the register ranges. So if F is no longer used, then we can remove the entry from there. Okay, now, um, the third, Dimension is that when something writes to the IO space via IOS write or via POC PVM instructions or via POC constructions, like for example, in you say uh, the byte at, okay, let's see the ranges here, the byte at uh, 9 byte equals 66, and you execute this, then the IO space itself, after, after it writes, it should traverse this table, see which values are mapped in a range that gets affected by this, right? And then remap those values. So conceptually speaking, this is very simple, right? So in this case, it will go column by column, uh, row by row here and say, oh, F is in, it's, it's impacted, remap. Oh, G is impacted, remap. Okay. Um, If one of those subfields are changed, you have to remap the whole thing. Yeah. So it will happen. Yeah. And then so. Uh, so if we like, if we, if in a in a loop or something, you know, we change this field and that field and that field like sequentially, so each time we do a full remap every time. So uh, this can cause performance problems. Yeah, but it's better than what we have to do yeah. now. So. Maybe we should do another iteration after, yeah. Uh, in the case where reads was sailed before, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, reads. Wait, wait. In the expected case where reads are vastly more common than writes, that's not really going to be too much of an issue. Probably. Yeah. Especially compared to each read doing that, which is the current state of things. Uh, like the problem is when you have a like uh, when you are updating different parts of your structure. So you have like update this field, this field, this field, this field. So each no, of these systems will need to full remap, full remap, full remap, full remap. Yeah, but how many fields can you have in struct? If it, it's been nested, you know, you can do. Oh, I mean, I'm just pointing out there are problems. Is this the is this the case of writing to a field through a map value? Yeah. In that case, we don't need to remap. No, I mean, the problem here is that this table should contain always, with the simple schema, this table should contain always uh, containers, ranges, and, and, and nested ones. You need to have the nested values there. So, by necessity, since it's an, a sub, a sub, it is nested, a change here in this little range, it will impact like... Huge. Yeah, I know, but... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could maybe do something like that because the compiler knows things. Yeah. So the compiler knows, for example, oh, this is an element in this array. 
So maybe we can, once we have this simple version working, we can add columns to this to, or metadata to this table, like saying, hey, wait a second, this value is contained immediately uh, in this other one. Then be more smart. Yeah. So but yeah. If you're accessing a like, integer, it has a fixed size. If or we have conditions or right. So I am very glad that you raised this que this topic, this question. Why? Because this looks so simple. It is an immediate huge improvement, but okay. First, it can't be a table like this. <laughs> huh? Yeah, we have. I have. I made a design with Luca some time ago with two binary trees for the beginning and the end that were up, up, uh, updating a table. Okay, there are many options here, but my point here is that somebody should say, okay, I want to be the mapper master. You know, and huh? no, but we really need someone that first do a clever implementation of this, not a trivial one, right? Just what just said, okay, yeah, there are problems because the contained ranges are in fact the containing ranges and there is propagation there and maybe it can propagate, maybe at the end of the day it propagates to the full range. <laughs> but somebody has to step in, step over and say, okay, I will own this, right? So I want to make a clever as possible implementation, still simple initially, and then in time, you know, okay, let's improve it and making it more clever. Because I don't, I, I don't know how common this problem is, but I don't think it's a common problem anywhere else. If you have, for example, a uh, file system, and you go through poke and change something somewhere, then it have to impact on the whole file system. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah, but okay. Okay. So that's. If, if the task is understood, and this is not just to get a, a first implementation up and running. And here is the number of objects times the maximum depth of objects. So this is actually pretty well bounded to the lower rating of the object count. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Okay. I mean, so, but now what I'm interested here now is does anyone want, anyone wants to actually work on this? Not just to provide a first implementation, but actually to, it can be detached very easily from POC itself, because as you see, I mean, it is writes, reads, I mean, in this case, writes, register value and remove value from the database, from the data structure. But then again, um, because we have this experience in other subcomponents, we have quite pretty complex subcomponents that are, were written by people and then um, that those persons stop hacking and then we struggle to actually understand, you know, and to evolve them. So this will probably become a quite central part of the program because the IOS space, we have ambitious plans for it. We want to support transactions, we want to support sub, sub, um, sub IOS better, so the IOS space, and this will be in the, in the, in the middle, in the center of it. And this is also related to the garbage collection, to the collector, also to the compiler, to the PVM. So this is quite a big part. It will be a big part of the program. So if we need someone who actually will not just go away after dumping an initial implementation so clever that nobody can understand it, right? So if some... <laughs> it's not a big commitment. <laughs> it's not a big commitment. No, it's not. It's okay. But it is a commitment, but I mean, you're already committed. So okay. It's like my usual is to play the MP one. So my command and that's why I play the second one. It's on. No, it's like the process says it's on. Oh well, I don't know. I see moving stuff moving there. Doesn't matter. Let's let's go. Ah, it's throwing through this mic. Yeah, but I mean, you need to get poke up and running, you know, and say, okay, because... And you can test it because you can write assembly statements in poke and you can actually, the new PBM instructions. Yeah, whoever does this will not be alone. But... Um, Okay, think about it. I, I don't know if you get to one yet. Well, 
Okay. So I, we have a little design here, but uh, we need someone clever. That's not me. That's not me too. Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that should be idiots. Cooper, or I don't know. Okay. Um, all right. One, two. So next topic. One, two. Yep, there it is. Ah, you see? Okay. Uh, next topic. We need to move on. Okay, referring offsets. Sorry. So, no, can, can you verify that everything works? I mean, I have Leave to. It. Bruno is there. I mean. <laughs> Leave it. We are running out okay, of time. Okay, okay. Uh, so, referring offset. So, uh, we introduced, I introduced a feature and, and asked, nobody asked for it, but I just did it. Uh, in POC4, which is in POC4, but it's not documented. Yeah. So, no, actually, I don't think anyone knows about this yeah. because it's not documented. Ah, yeah, you see. So, basically, now it is possible to, to have sort of pointers, like references. So, you, in normal offset, you have a base type, like this is an offset of uh, 32 bits, that unit is bytes, but it refers to an integer. It refers to a 32 bits integer, right? Huh? It was you? Ah, oh, well, yeah, then, okay. Then you are responsible for whatever happens. Places with some weird unity. Yeah, so for example, if you have like um, um, uh, int i and then you have an offset in an int with bytes to an int, right, pointer, and then uh, you say, okay, uh, f.ptr is, is an offset, right? It's an offset. Oh. Ah, well, anyway, the, but the point here is that you can do this. Can you see it? Yes. Right? And then this refers to a zero. There is a zero there. And yeah, so this is an integral. Now, this will be especially useful when we have records, like when we can refer to, we have recursive type support, but we don't have at the moment. So you can denote trees and binary JSON and all BSON and all this. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, but it is still, it's, it's useful already because you can have an array of offsets mapped, which is common in certain formats that refer to other stuff. And OK, so main decision. What should, what, do we want to actually keep this support undocumented, or we just get rid of it? I think it's best to do it in a different way. OK. The operator thing is weird, and also the lack of recursive types is kind of limiting. So it might be good to. OK. So Arsene will send a proposal <laughs> to poke the veil with an alternative design. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, will, I will spam you with uh, all those items that, yeah. Now, if we kept the functionality, um, it would be nice to have the printer of the belly optionally following those references. So it is easy to print like an inode tree, for example, something like that. Okay, thanks. Any other comment about this? No? So, we need a universal mapper, and this should be written in POC. So, as you know, um, we have a universal printer. Uh, Lipoc. You have to first explain RP. that. We have a uni. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, we have a universal printer, print val. You have to first say that we have non-universal thing for each type, so we compile mapper writer. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Thanks. <laughs> okay, so why why is it universal? Because it takes a type of a uh, value of type any. Print format any. So this is it. So this is. This big function, which is, is written in POC itself, and it's part of the runtime, this takes a value of type of any, 
kind of type, and then um, it either prints it or formats it, and you know, like it does all the magic. <coughs> Obviously, it uses a lot of inline assembly. Okay, so this printer is used in most cases. There are some cases where this is not used, but in some cases, the compiler knows the type at compile time of some value, and then it generates just the, the precise instructions needed to print that value, which is more efficient. But this is universal. Now, for mapping, we have the same, and for writing, and for constructing, and all those operations that depend on the of a type. So for mapping, every time that you define a struct, for example, the compiler the, in, internally defines a, a function in assembly code that actually maps values of that particular type. So it's much more efficient, because it doesn't have to, to ask for the, oh, how many fields I have? And then a low, no, no. If, if, the, fun, if the strut has fields uh, A, B, C, and then it's like, okay, map A, map B, and map C, right? But we do need a uni an universal mapper. Um, so if anybody, this is not a high priority, but, uh, uh, I forgot. This is um, uh, mapper. Uh, I forgot. We have like any because we can print any. So if you want to have any as a first class citizen, we have to be able to map them. So. Yeah, but there were some some okay. I will do that. But really, there are some, you know, there has been several branches that they have been working on, implementing something nice, and I found that blocker. Like, oh shit, we cannot support this because we need an universal mapper. But I, I, I will recall and send. Okay, so let's move on. So, Dampval, are you familiar with it? So, let's say that, uh, I have here a foo.o, which is a, it, this is an L file that contains some BTF information. So, um, get sections by name. So I get this and then Section. This offset. Oops. And so this is the BTF information. So if you do, do dump value the BTF, and then you get something like this. So you have like the the, the this color code. So you have the header, the types, and the string, and then you can do val uh, either btf dot header, for example, or or val one, because you know it is it creates those little shortcuts, which are hyperlinks, by the way. Huh? Sorry. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, and then you have the header there, and so on. If you want to to see, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, BTF types, then you have, this is an array, so that's why you see, it, you get it like this. And uh, it's, it's a nice way to, to see, you know, how types, okay, so this was a, uh, now, it needs a visual representation for people who actually can't distinguish colors in text, or for even terminals that for some reason uh, can't be, or POC is not built with color support, with the styling. So ideas welcome. Okay, this is something that, yeah. Yeah. It must be something like in, the, in between the the. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but 
there is this tool. What was this tool? The FQ. FQ uh -huh. That dumps something maybe similar to what we want. Okay, so does anyone want to, to work on this? Now, you know that you know that uh, the dump command is written in POC itself, including the coloring and everything. Yes, dump. It is this function. And so this involves like working with this POC code here, but it's it's, it's actually trivial. POC is nice for those for those uh, kind of things. Yeah. yeah. FQ. They are young. They are kids. They like that sort of things. So Faust, will you take a look and report in the list? Okay. Take a look. Do a design. And and send to poke the well. Do a design and an implementation. Do a design and an implementation and send to poke the bell. Okay. And test. And test. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So. Do you remember the, the structure binary diffs? Do you remember the structure binary diffs? Yes. Which are also implemented in POC. So for example, let's say that say, okay, what what is the difference between the the first type and the second type in the BTF section? Right? So then you will do something like this. You see? It's nice yeah. because basically you have like the the bit or you know the byte or you know the bytes difference at the left, and then you even know what is different. Oh, one is an int, the one the other one is a func prototype, function prototype, as you can see in the screen. But you, this kind of still is suitable to be applied by a program to to binary file. So if somebody has, is anything not clear? Oh, you see? <laughs> okay, let me... <laughs> is it better now? No, I think the color is green and red is brown. Doesn't matter, not really how it's rejected. Well, well, basically, you have at the left like the bytes and like header similar to the Unity format. And then at the right, and then you have the field's name is informative. And the value at the right, which is super nice, because here you can have a byte difference between those BTF types that they are stored. But also you have at the right exactly what's the difference. One is a BTF function proto prototype with those values, and the other one is an integer with this encoding. Now, this is suitable to be patched automatically in the binary, right? I think this is quite cool. And incidentally, let me brag a little bit, this is also implemented in POC. And this is implemented in POC in 326 lines of code, the, the full diffing. Oh, and, and fat comments, the full diffing, and you see? So, okay, so we will need a little utility written in C or what even C++, I don't know, whatever, to actually apply those binary patches in case someone wants to give it a try. Like, the format is very simple, as you have seen, and so if, huh? No, no, it's, it's exact, yeah. You don't want context here in binary stuff. 
Yeah. Okay. So just in case someone gets in the mood and wants to do a little weekend hacking, you know, and if somebody writes a C program that actually can apply the over structured diffs, we, 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 we will add it to the distribution, right? So it would be like a spatch or something. So like uh, the first, can you, like the header, I think it uh, needs some uh, explanation, like the uh, at, at. So ah, um, we don't have time for that, but yeah, I mean, it's basically similar to diff, but in bytes. So it's this byte plus those bytes and this byte. Okay. Um, okay, type attributes. Um, I, I have a branch for supporting type attributes, and it's quite advanced, but um, basically the type attributes is that so you can do something like type foo equals a struct and then you can have like I don't know int size and then a payload uh, uh, um, bytes of this size data <coughs> so this 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 type in POG is not complete it's not a complete type so you cannot do like for example if you have a struct or uh, is it size of I forgot no no yeah, like if we create a, an instance, well, you, ha you get the size, but it's not known at compile time, which means that it cannot be used as 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 offset as offset units and other and other issues. So what I am doing is that we can add attributes to types, and one of those is size. So you can here say something like size other attribute. So I am introducing this syntax, which is similar to the argument passing for commands. I think it's nice syntax. And I am, so I created the syntax. Good news, it's not ambiguous, so it works <laughs> for struct types. And I am, as a proof of concept, I implement in size, the size attribute, which is quite useful. Also, the mappers can check <laughs> that what you map is exactly that size, which also, you know, helps to. Error. And actually, uh, this also allows to have a lot of structs in an array, even the structs are variable length, and do it efficiently. Because you don't need to remap the previous elements of the array in order to know where the current element starts. So this is, anyway, do you like the syntax? I think this is very good syntax. OK. And this can be, in the future, applied to other types, like, like arrays or whatever. OK, so no objections to this, right? Okay, so we, I will move forward with it. Now, the Emax interface, it needs love. It really needs. Yeah, yeah. It needs love because I force myself to use the, the, the command line interface because that's what most people use to not ne so I don't neglect it. Otherwise, I would be using the Emax interface, but okay. Um, so, something that... Um, showed up in the steering committee QA. So I am tempted to do a one year length experiment, which is to try to add source hat to our work, not to add it to the workflow, but to have it. Um, and the purpose of the experiment is to see if the addition of new kind of workflows can be done without disrupting our workflow, over the one that we have now. So I will take a look to SourceHot, and I don't because I will. I like to have the main Git repository in Sourceware, but I guess it's not a problem to have another one in Source in SourceHot that will synchronize from time to time, like every hour or something. I guess I don't know if that's yeah. So we will see. Do you like the idea? Apparently, SourceHat is very email oriented, so it should be of, it should be tolerable. And if there is someone who shows up using SourceHat and sends some patch or something, then we will see what happens. So this, this is for uh, doing patch with you and stuff like that. Like I guess I've never used it. Over the web UI of this, so 
we won't really be able to exploit the financial gear part C source set because that requires for the repository, uh, or rather the mailing list, to also be in source set. But the mailing list is for some new or in the last. Uh, but. And what that's a lot of problem. So if, if we could send to that. No, no, that's not a problem. I'm saying we can't use uh, the patch review online view thing oh. that it has. We can use it to receive patches. That's fine. Yeah. But that will be part of the experiment. So that will require to change the mailing list to the to the source hat mailing list. I don't want to make a uh, Remind me, I'll send you links to the patch interface. Mm -hmm. Because. Or what we just do that we will email. Maybe we can mirror the mailing list in the other one. There's a. Uh, well, the forwarding the issue is that that will change the origin server address. So that will fail SPF checks. Oh. And in Merck policies, uh, for cross archive, and I don't think source that's at least main instance does that. Maybe we can set up some home thing and try to have it together. Mm. Okay. Uh, so there was one some um, in the FSF, uh, like I'm Bentley, was working on having an instance of source hub on FSF infrastructure. In the FSF infrastructure, Ian was doing that. I heard something, you know, but I'm not Okay, sure. then. There was someone in the case. Yeah. Uh, I mean, by the way. Either Alfred or Bruno mentioned the same thing. Oh, I, I heard from him, like, in one of these Libre Planet conference. He was, uh, yeah. That, this would be the best. Okay. Okay, we'll take care of that. All right, and then. Um, yeah, the manual needs lost. I have to go back to the manual at some point. And especially the new features that we introduced in the last couple of years are severely under documented. So they need more documentation. And right now we have a program, as I would say, yeah? I think that we have a program which is impressively powerful, but uh, you need to know how to use it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I don't know, any idea to improve this? So, uh, tutorial, I don't know, like we have a bunch of videos. We have some videos and they have like a list of, yeah, but. I don't know, but for example, one thing that I suggest, I mean, up to now, we, we, when you install POC, plain POC, and you don't have a configuration file, it doesn't look like mine here. Yeah. It's a, it's a I mean, it actually, do we have a minus Q? Uh, yes. yes, there. So it looks like this. So, like this. So all in one line, the prompt is super simple. Um, there is no pretty printing enabled by default. Well, yeah. Um, so, yes, we have an entry in the menu saying, oh, do you want a fancy prompt? Just to find this POC function with this name, you know, and here is an example. Now, what about to making the fancy example into the, I think it's here, right? Changing the prompt. Oh, yeah, the prompt is very simple, but mm, write something like this and you will have, you know, like something cool like this. So, should we actually change our philosophy and instead of presenting a program Spartan and simple by default, which could be deceiving, <laughs> you know, should we say, okay, the circus is in town? I mean, you get, you know, like <laughs> sort of whistles and bells. Huh? <laughs> So I think it doesn't, it doesn't need to be sported. Yeah, that's a good argument. Getting some examples would be useful. Especially a configuration that you have being shipped. Yeah, but if we could, oh, oh, like shipping. Like UI profile, they can say you can change the profile to this thing. Like you get the name, right? So yeah. you say, 
Yeah. yeah, but what about the default configuration? Should be a, like a fancy one or like we, we follow minimal? Yeah. Like we can make it fancier, but like have this message line that, okay, with that profile you can change it and you can put it in your RSV file. So, when by default, what can be done? Like, the is to use my... Ah, but that will be a different interface. Yes, but still, you start with the, the command line very basic, you have nothing on top. And then maybe you put a line saying there if you want all fancy stuff. Oh, maybe we could maybe we could have it like printed when it starts. Yeah. Like welcome yeah. to Poke if you want the circus type dot circus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what they, because I have observed that some people come to the IRC channel and then they, you know, and they and they ask questions. We are like, oh, well, use this, use that, and they were like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know, yeah, okay. I have a question or suggestion. The last time I used Poke, um, I was using something which was not Yes, look, yes, you know, this is, this is, for example, you load BTF, right? Then you do info, uh, well, type, and then type B, and you have the BTF, and then the types are always following, you know, like, so you say, oh, so BTF enum64, right? What is this? And then you get something like this. But what the preferred one is like from the file, you know, what is? Exactly. It's it's from oh well info, info types and then you say BTF whatever and then it tells you the name and the li and the line of which file it comes from. Okay. Do you know that's the thing? That's exactly. The tool it has a lot of shit in it and useful stuff. <laughs> it's it's not it's not a Mickey Mouse application. It's to, not. I so. Huh? But that's the thing, how, how should we do it? Do we need to do to make tutorial videos? I don't know. Yeah. Right, I don't like videos. Oh, also, you know, you have also four variables. I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. No. Yes, <laughs> but it's empty. Well, you have to BTF stop, yeah. Oh, oh, it should be BTF, I guess. No. Oof. The what? Ah, this is regular expression. Yeah, well, okay. What? Uh, what? Oh, that is right. Imagine you find a function that you think the link wants to do something you want to. Can you actually read what options you have to provide? Okay. No, well, you have the help thing, uh, which is, you know, all the topics which are also written in POC, and you have. Can you print a function signature? Yeah. No. No, but that will be interesting, given the name. I mean, what happens if we just refer to a closure in an expression? What happens when the result of an expression is a closure? Could you go back to poke it's and show the closure, like hash closure? Try, oh, yeah. perfect. Okay, so that could just PK something, uh, any function. PK, no, a, a function. Yeah. Now info fun will, will be useful. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. PK, oh, PKL format any. Yeah, yeah. you can replace that folder. The, the thing is kind of useless with, uh, sure, keep the name, but also as the yeah. argument list, yeah. Ah, in the clo oh, this is nice. Actually, we used to not have a name there. Yeah. Now, <laughs> 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 who added that? <laughs> but it's nice. 
Judith, did you do that? I think I did it, but I, I, I was thinking about this. Maybe I did that. I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're referring to Lord Fox, this is kind of London politics. Yeah. You know which that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To signature. Hmm. I don't know who did this, but okay. Uh, if, if you type what? Yeah. Yeah, we have this trick. Yeah, we have this trick. Yes, yes. But having the name in the closure opaque representation is useful because if you have an array of of closures or something, then you need to know I mean, what is it. Oof, that would be... Someone who can get in and get that in in a hybrid like myself, and you say, oh, in 10 minutes I can learn from some other stuff. It would it also be nice to cover patterns, like we do an apology for some kind of thing. Yeah. We, can have, we have this learn token why minutes thingy. Yeah. I'm not sure how useful is that. Because if you go and you watch, I think your feeds are like two hours. Yeah, but that's me. I can't do anything that is less than four hours. So I can open this, uh, this document and then learn to spoke in oh, your other time. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Well, let me hear this. Yeah. In the dark directly. Yeah, but that, that's exactly the opposite of the dark. Yeah, this. Yeah, but is this up to date? No. Uh, that's me. I don't know. Well, okay. okay. So. Maybe you, you just yeah, push it to the main. None of those when you open the, the top page, the web page, it is in topology. But yeah, yeah, it's like. I mean, the homepage looks sort of voluntary. Five months ago. Yeah. Like, let's put it in the circle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the what? In the circle. Why just in the tutorial? Tutorial. Okay, wait. Circus. Okay. <laughs> Most of the people want only to do very basic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They don't really mention the other stuff. Okay, well so thank you for the for the implementations, tests, algorithms that you committed, but <laughs> no, so nobody wants to do the reactive thing. I warn you, if nobody does it I but if I do it. It will be so dumb <laughs> that it will be so cringy. I have to finish another compiler in like 14 days. I'm kind of out of time. Wow. What? I need to write a compiler by the end of September. <laughs> well, the bench compiler or what? The crap language that I made that looks like C. It's for demonstration purposes. Ah, you could have to choose to like brain fart. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to be a useful demonstration. Oh, yeah. Four. Yeah, four. <laughs> For those who are rich, all that are more simple to compile, like in a naive way. Okay. Um, so yeah. yeah. Thank you. I want to go to all the um, to do that we have, but there is no time. So David is happy. <laughs> oh no! One more, one more thing. Where is the GDP integration? In my system? Yeah, excellent. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the previous one is not the topology. I don't know. I have a branch in GDB. Yes, I will send you. No, push to it. I don't have access to push to GDB. You don't have? Still, still Well, go to Sourceware and get a, send the email to get right access. So, Do you have right access to GDB? No. Well, why would I have? <laughs> because you are doing the poke integration in GDB. 